feet who can stand. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, don't remember my iniquities. Does anybody know what iniquities is? Know what the definition of that word is? Iniquities? The times we messed up, okay? It means the times that we've been so selfish that we didn't think about other people. You see, we are born to be incredibly selfish. Think about it. You have a little baby. What do they do when they get hungry? They start screaming. They start crying. What do they do if they need their diaper changed? They start screaming. They start crying. And they start yelling and shouting until somebody pays them attention. Sometimes people never grow up. <laughs> All right? And it's like whenever they need anything, they shout and scream and say, look at me. But what Christianity does, it transforms us. One of the greatest gifts this side of heaven is to find that person that loves you and that person that you love. Because out of that love comes the family and children. It's our deepest desire. It's our deepest need as human beings to feel connected to someone else. And yet there's those rare saints who have fallen in love with God so much that they give up their own family so that they can indeed serve everyone else and make the whole world their family. Sister Faustina is such a soul. She chose not to get married, but to dedicate her life in service of her brothers and sisters. And she intensely prayed and offered many prayers. This last weekend, I was in, uh, Saturday, I was at the Mass with the bishop, and we were commemorating uh, the World Apostolate of Fatima every first Saturday in October. We have a big breakfast, and we had this priest come speak to us, Wade Menesis, and um, he's of the Fathers of Mercy, and how much greater is this on the Fathers of Mercy, and how he told us how important it is to pray the rosary every day, but linked with this also is to try and think about praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet every day too. That only takes about six minutes to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. How, many, how much time do we spend in video games, right? 
you know, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. This was the devotion that Sister Faustina really brought to the world and fostered in a very big and powerful way. So, but he said, and I really like this, he said, what the church really needs today is CPR. Do you know what CPR is? When you hear CPR, what's CPR? Con yep, chest compressions, right? If somebody's like had a heart attack, you can give them CPR. They've changed it a little bit before you would aspirate them and you would put the, give them a breath as well as, as giving the chest compressions, right? So it's a way to bring people to life. It's people who had a heart attack, their heart stopped pumping, you start doing compressions, it can also tie, try and bring it back to life. So the image is that the church needs to be brought back to life in many respects. It will never die, Jesus will never leave his church, he promised Peter the, the, the gates of hell shall never prevail over it. But that doesn't mean that the church gets in trouble sometimes and the devil really attacks it. And how it's being attacked today is people don't know right from wrong. They're getting very confused. So what he says CPR is, it stands for something different. Confession. Catholics are invited to go to confession once a month. Now we do it here during Advent and Lent, try and give you guys at least a couple chances to do it if you don't come on the weekends to try and go to confession other than those times. But we try and offer it to all the, the people in, in here, all the Catholics, and if you're not Catholic, you're still welcome to talk to a priest and the priest will pray with you. So confession is the C. P is penance. That means we make sacrifices for other people. We offer things up. My father told me this when I was a little kid. He said, if somebody breaks a candy bar in two and one piece is bigger than the other and they offer you which piece to take, now naturally we're going to take the bigger one. But Jesus would say, my father taught me to say, the little one is fine. I will, I will be content with less. Because if we're content with less, that means others have more. And that's what Jesus did for us. He shows us how to serve. So we, our whole life is unpacking this selfishness, unpacking this way in which we think about ourselves first, but we actually try and live for other people before ourselves. This is the recipe for joy, too. This will be what will make you really happy. If you're always looking for other people to make you happy, give up because people aren't usually like that. But if you strive to make someone else happy, not only will you make them happier, but you yourself will be much happier. What do you feel like when somebody does something kind for you, right? It makes you feel good. You appreciate them. And that's really a great gift. So P is penance, offering up things. Like St. Teresa, whose feast we just had a little while ago, making the little sacrifices of love. Did you realize like doing your homework can be a sacrifice to God? Say, I'm not going to play video games. I'm going to work a little bit harder tonight. And you say, Lord, I offer this up to you. Did you realize that? Your brother or sister's being a real stinker. And instead of fighting back, you say, oh, Lord, help them. I'm going to offer this up for you. Did you realize this? We can take all these little things and offer them to God. And finally, um, R, which is reparation. Penance is really basically for our own sins, our own failures, and reparation is when we do extra prayers or, or pray or do different things to repair the damage that sin causes in the world. And so if we as Christians live our life in such a way that we are thinking about other people before ourselves and we're offering prayers and sacrifices for other people, we do make reparation for sin. And if the church recaptures these ideals, confession, penance, and reparation, the church will experience a great healing. Okay? Because every... Catholic who doesn't go to Mass on Sunday with no good excuse causes great damage to the church. That's a mortal sin, right? So if we don't do that, we're hurting the church. And a lot of people don't even know that. They don't even believe that. They don't think it's true. But it doesn't change the fact of how much damage is being done by Catholics who are not practicing their faith. The world has been very good at trying to get people not to believe in God and certainly not to believe in the church. Let us pray 
through God's divine mercy, we can do what we might to begin this healing process in our own hearts and also in the heart of the church. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Like one little sacrifice you could make is like really participating in mass, like singing and saying the responses when you don't want to, when you feel like intimidated. And the big response is the amen. When we say through him, with him, and in him, and we sing that amen, and, and hopefully our teachers can kind of lead the way in this and show us how, how we can engage and, and really let it come from our hearts. Let us stand, stand as we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. For the church of the mystical body of Christ, that she may grow and prosper in the Lord's saving work, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That truth, justice, and love of the gospel of life may inspire all those in public office, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us here in the month of Mary, that we may embrace Mary through the Holy Rosary, and desire to imitate her example of love and faithfulness to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering in the body, mind, or spirit, that they may find cons consolences to Christ's healing presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, and for Thomas Keller, for whom the Mass is offered, that she may find rest in the internal presence of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Offertory Hymn is number 608 in the Glory and Praise. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Number 608 in the glory and praise. <laughs> 